Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hey, Tony here. Just wanted to let you know that I've got a new book out called Memorizing Pharmacology Mnemonics, and it's really meant to help you not only improve your memory, but have better memory techniques as you're studying for the boards that are coming up this spring. And also, I'm teaching PHR 185 Pharmacology. Uh, There's only 10 spaces left for the summer session, but it's completely online. And you can find that at dmac.edu, or just get in touch with me. I'll put the links in the show notes. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Today, my uh, P4 student, Lindsay Tillo, from the University of Iowa, is going to take over, uh, interviewing Jessica Sinclair, who is a PGY1 at the University of North Carolina, uh, working at RX Clinic. Uh, she's a Purdue University grad, so staying in the Big Ten. Uh, so let me welcome Lindsay Tillo, Jessica Sinclair, to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Yeah, so everybody's leadership route is a little different. Can you tell me a little bit about yours? Yeah, so I would say my leadership style and um, the positions I obtained really started in pharmacy school, and I I really saw that develop mostly in the teaching arena. So I was a teaching assistant at the Purdue University Retail Pharmacy, and that's re- really where I started to see my passion for helping students grow. So we taught the P1 students how to counsel on prescriptions, And a lot of them coming in didn't really know much about counseling. So it was great to see them develop over the course of the semester because by the end of it, they were just so confident in their skills. And I feel like that is where I'm really passionate about leadership is instilling confidence in the upcoming generation of pharmacists. And I really see that as an area um, that we need to focus on developing because the pharmacy field is changing really quickly. So Um, being able to keep up with that and help educate and mentor the incoming pharmacists is very important to me. Awesome. So are you wanting to do something maybe in the future, um, like teaching at a pharmacy college or anything like that? Yes, that's definitely um, a long-term goal of mine. So I want to stay involved in teaching in some capacity throughout my career. So Going forward, after the residency, I will have my teaching certificate, so I'd like to use that. But also with my pharmacy, we created an online school, and as part of that, I'm helping to educate even pharmacists on how to offer clinical services, even in the community setting. So I really get to be highly involved in teaching throughout my residency, so that's been really rewarding for me, and I've even been able to have it to a higher level than I expected because I knew I'd be precepting students and um, maybe even other residents, helping them um, and teaching them, but not really pharmacists. So that was something that I definitely did not expect to have. That's really neat. That's something I would have never even thought of um, as a career (laughs) potential. (laughs) So that's pretty neat. Um, So obviously you're in a community pharmacy. What um, made you choose community pharmacy? Did you just not want to do hospital or was there something that was particularly um, interesting about community that you liked? So early on in my pharmacy career, I knew that I had a passion for developing relationships with others. And I was trying to find a place or a setting where I could see that grow and flourish. So I was looking more for the community or ambulatory care route because that's really where you start to see patients on a consistent basis. Because if you're in the hospital setting, you don't want to see your patients more frequently than you have to. But in the ambulatory care setting and community setting, it's really about learning more about about the patients rather than just their medications or disease states and how do we treat them on a more comprehensive level. So I feel like I'm able to develop stronger relationships when I have those more frequent interactions with patients. So I was really looking for a setting where I would be able to do that. Yeah, I definitely understand. That's kind of what drew me to community pharmacy as well, is I love that patient relationship that you can develop. Yes. Um, So what made you choose um, doing a PGY-1 community residency um, as opposed to just entering into community practice right off the bat? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a question I get asked a lot, especially during recruiting events for residency. A lot of people are like, why can't I just go into retail and start working there because I'll make a lot more money. And that is true. (laughs) Um, But what my residency really focuses on is trying to offer innovative services within the community setting. So it's not about learning how to necessarily process the prescription really well or learn how to um, count pills really well. It's more about trying to change the way others are viewing community pharmacy so that we can help move community pharmacy into a more clinical direction or helping to maximize processes or maybe just enhance the services that we offer at those sites. Okay, that makes sense. Um, So obviously the University of North Carolina is one of the top ranked um, residency programs. Do you have any recommendations for somebody looking to apply to the University of North Carolina? So maybe not necessarily specific to North Carolina, but I encourage all students to look early on and not to close yourself off to the residencies out there. And a lot of people, they may think that that the only thing they want to do is a specific area of pharmacy. But if you open your eyes, especially on your appy rotations, you'll find that you may be interested in things that you didn't think you would be originally. And I've learned that the passions that I have don't necessarily come out in terms of opportunities the way I would expect. And what I mean by that is a lot of the things that I'm really passionate about I find those through my residency, but they weren't always in the same form or same shape that I expected them to be. So uh, definitely keep your mind open to all the opportunities, and I think that'll help you grow, even if it's not an experience that you expect to enjoy. Um, For the residency application process, definitely look early um, and start preparing in advance because there are a lot of pieces to the application Um, that need to be uploaded into forecasts and you need to have letters of recommendation and giving the people in the process more time definitely helps it go more smoothly. That's great advice. And I really liked what you said about keeping your mind open during your APPE rotations, because you are completely right. There's been so many different (laughs) changes. Every time I have a rotation, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my favorite rotation. No, this one is my favorite rotation. (laughs) Definitely keeping your mind open. That's great advice. Yes, I had an informatics rotation early on in my AFI year, and that was actually one of my favorite rotations, but I remember learning it in school. It was not interesting at all, so that definitely changed my perspective. Well, kind of transitioning into um, what Charlotte uh, in North Carolina is like, what was, um, so yes. what was that transition between Indiana and North Carolina like? So in terms of the state, I really enjoy the weather in North Carolina. Um, Indiana was definitely a little bit colder, and North Carolina is just a beautiful state. You have the mountains um, in Asheville, and you have the Outer Banks for the beach. So it's definitely the best of both worlds, so I love that part of it. But in terms of pharmacy, it is fairly different. So in North Carolina, you have the opportunity to become a clinical pharmacist practitioner, And with that designation, you're actually able to prescribe through a collaborative practice agreement. So one of our pharmacists, she actually is a CPP, and she has recently started seeing patients for that. So we're definitely seeing shifts within the pharmacy field, especially in North Carolina. So I think things are a little bit more fast-paced in North Carolina. Carolina, which was something that I had to get used to when I moved here. And especially with my site, things are definitely innovative and very progressive. So I've had to learn how to adapt to things quicker and see things transition um, more rapidly. So that's been a great learning experience for me. And I've definitely enjoyed the pace of pharmacy here. That's good to know. Um, so you said that North Carolina, and this is something I've been reading about in uh, North Carolina a lot, that they have the opportunity for pharmacists to become uh, practitioners, basically. And is that something that you're looking into doing as well? So right now, I will be starting at one of the clinics in Charlotte, North Carolina, starting to offer chronic care management and also annual wellness visits. And through that, Becoming a clinical pharmacist practitioner may be beneficial, but really starting out, 
it may take a little bit more time before I'm able to get that designation. It is something that I'm considering, but I'm also looking into the other certifications that are out there. And there's still opportunities to practice on a clinical level, even without that designation. So I feel like there are a lot of opportunities and I'm still trying to figure out which pathway I want to pursue. But that's definitely an option that I'm considering. Yeah, I understand. Um, is So is that part of the reason why you chose North Carolina residency over maybe some other residencies? Yes, I definitely wanted to move to North Carolina um, for several reasons, but pharmacy being very progressive in this state was definitely one of those reasons. And even uh, neighboring states to North Carolina, they may not be as progressive. So it's definitely state specific. And I would highly encourage people to look into the laws in the states that they're applying to, especially if you're not region bound, um, because the laws can be very different. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what kind of, what advice do you have for me or for other pharmacy students who are moving from the Midwest to the East Coast? So, um, in general, for the pharmacy, like I said, it's very fast-paced in North Carolina. Um, Moving to the East Coast, I don't know if I have recommendations specifically on that, but when you are going to a different state, uh, um, keep in mind what resources you have and your professors and all of the people you know, they're definitely good resources and probably have contacts in the states which you're applying. And they may have resources for you in terms of preparing for the MPJE in that state, um, which can be a big piece to moving to another state. You have to get licensed there. So preparing for that and studying in a way that makes sense so you're not overloading yourself or um trying to make your studying process a little bit more efficient, it helps to have the resources that will allow you to study more efficiently. Yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of what I'm struggling with right now is <laughs> how do I, I start studying that. for North Carolina law? Yes. <laughs> it's a struggle. I can definitely tell you that there are classes, um, especially in North Carolina, where they do have um, law review courses. So That's good to know. I can specifically for that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so kind of switching it back up to talking about your uh, residency, um, can you tell me what a day in the life is like at RX Clinic? Yes. So that's actually one of the hardest questions for me to answer because at RX Clinic Pharmacy, things are definitely moving at a very rapid pace. And there are a lot of opportunities. So my schedule is not the same from day to day. But like I mentioned previously, I will be starting with a new clinic to offer those um, services um, as a clinical pharmacist. But I do staff one day a week. Um, two of my days are really focused on the clinic. One day may, may be more related to admin, and then I'll have another day for working on my UNC responsibilities. So it's more kind of on a weekly basis is what it looks like in terms of a standard. Um, but really, my residency focused more strongly on the community side in the beginning, and then it transitioned into the ambulatory care during the second quarter. And then the last quarter was really helping me to find opportunities that were related to my interests, but would also help the clinic and the pharmacy grow. Sure. Um, which kind of, which section, which quarter did you um, like the best out of the community and the ambulatory um, so I would say the second quarter was probably uh, my favorite because that was when we first launched our online school. So it's um, called the Avant Institute of Clinicians. And through that, we are actually teaching other pharmacists how to offer clinical services. And we host a boot camp where pharmacists come from all across the country to learn about that. And I think seeing those pharmacies come in, a lot of them were independent pharmacies where they were feeling really um, not not so great about how the pharmacy industry is looking. And they were just saying, I have so many burdens in terms of DIR fees and reimbursement is declining for filling prescriptions. And so it's really hard to survive as an independent pharmacy. But by the end of that training, you just see a light bulb pop on their heads and they just feel like pharmacy has so many opportunities and they can change the way that their pharmacy is heading to where it's in a more positive direction and helps the pharmacist grow, helps the pharmacy with revenue and also contributes to the need for more primary care 
um, providers. So it's definitely a rewarding experience. And I've loved seeing all the pharmacies progress through that. And just as an example, out of the eight pharmacies that we had that came to the first session in November, five of them secured a clinical contract within a week. So very successful, and it was definitely uh, rewarding to see that. That's really neat. Yeah, um, I, that, that sounds like something that's, that could be really interesting and very uh, helpful for those independent pharmacies. I like that <laughs> idea a lot. <laughs> Um, so you're obviously your residency year is coming to a close. You said that you're going to start working with, um, the clinic. Do you have any other plans for after, after you're done? So my current plan is to stay involved, um, with the pharmacy. So my goal is to stay on, um, with our clinic pharmacy and also be involved with the residency going forward. So playing a small role in teaching and also guiding the resident for next year. So I may also be helping out with some of the UNC responsibilities. So kind of carrying over my role from this year to next year. Oh, that sounds like a nice transition. Um, That'll be really nice for the next resident too, to have have you there to kind of help them transition as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we kind of talked about your ultimate goal and how you're thinking about teaching, but um, do you have plan any plans for, for you know, like your five-year plan or just kind of winging it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it sometimes changes, and I know I want to pursue the BCACP, so um, board certified in ambulatory care pharmacy and possibly also my CDE, so certified diabetes educator. I really have a passion for treating patients with diabetes, and I feel like it is a growing area um, and disease state, unfortunately. So we do need more healthcare providers to assist those patients and help them manage their own um, disease state. So definitely a passion of mine and something that I'd like to pursue. So those are more of my short-term goals, but yes, long-term, trying to stay involved in teaching, at least in some capacity. And do you want to stay on the East Coast? You're just going to kind of go wherever wherever you can find a place? My plan is to stay in North Carolina. I love it here, and I am not planning to move unless I have to. <laughs> That's good to know. I keep – I'm trying to decide if I want to get licensed in Iowa, too, because I'm like, what if I hate it in North Carolina, but everybody tells me that I will not hate it. <laughs> I doubt you'll hate it, but it's always good to be licensed in your home state as well. I did um, get licensed in Indiana, too. Awesome. That's great. Great to know that. That's probably a good option <laughs> for me. <laughs> Do you have anything else that you want to tell our viewers about or anything else that you'd like to talk about? Um, I think just, like I said, be open to all of the opportunities that come up. And this is true of whatever field you decide to pursue, whether it's hospital, ambulatory care, community pharmacy. There are so many opportunities out there, and I encourage you to kind of think about what your interests are And it may just be a simple thing like, I like making people happy or just a trade or a strength or something like yours. And think about how those strengths fit into the position that you want to pursue. So my desire to develop relationships with others, that's really something that fits well into the ambulatory care and community setting. So it makes more sense for me to pursue that type of career. And it's not to say you wouldn't have those opportunities in another setting, but just think about how your current interests and your values and everything fit into your career pathway. And I think that will help um, you more align with what your ultimate goals are and will make you more happy in the long run. That's great advice. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining uh, me on the Pharmacy Future Leaders podcast, Jessica. Thank you so much. Support for this episode comes from Goodnight Pharmacology, 350 brand and generic name drugs with classifications, a leading resource for students in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia. Print, ebook, and audiobook available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag #PharmacyLeaders. Pharmacy Leaders.